Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today, today it's one of my favorite things, because today I get to make your ears bleed. It's called a non-musical idiot playing with musical software, and today we are looking at something called Bespoke, and this one was just released as version 1.0 uh, last week. Uh, it is a modular DAW for Mac, Windows, and Linux, but I wouldn't think of this in the traditional sense of a DAW. I wouldn't think of this in the traditional sense of anything. This is a software modular synthesizer, contains a bunch of modules which you can connect together to create sounds. So it is like a DAW, but it's less focused on a timeline and more focused on just jamming and exploring and playing around. And that is exactly what I will be doing. So the description that they give here is, in a way, bespoke is like if I smashed Ableton to bits with a baseball bat and asked you to put it back together. Uh, so that is bespoke. If you want to grab it, it is actually available completely for free. It is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. This is also an open sourced uh, package. There is an upgraded version of bespoke plus. My favorite favorite thing about Bespoke Plus is this feature. If you buy the $5 version, you will have $5 less in your pocket. Whereas if you jump up to the $15 version, it's even better because then you will have 15 fewer dollars in your pocket. So as you may be able to see, they're all identical. Uh, but if you want to support the developer, uh, you can do so this way. Uh, definitely a cool project. He's been working on this since I think he said 2011 or 2012. Uh, 2011. So if you want, by the way, there is documentation for this. There are some videos that walk you through how to use it. I do wish the only complaint I have in terms of um, using this, two things. First off, there is no new button, which I find very, very strange. So if you want to start over, you basically have to select the delete everything and go from there. Um, and then the other thing is all of the modules are documented, including their inputs. But a lot of times there's no actual um, description of what the heck a thing actually does. Um, or, or the description isn't always as thorough as I would like. But again, it is well documented. All of the modulars are here. Uh, and then there is some nice videos getting you up and going. So I'm going to start off uh, with uh, give you an expectation of the kind of crap that we're going to create here. And I'm doing this completely at random, by the way. This is my last creation, uh, ear bleeding warning in effect. <laughs> All right, so that is the kind of thing that we can create using this guy. So now let's uh, let's start fresh. As I said, uh, you've got the option of selecting everything and deleting it. I would just love to see a new button that would do this for you. Uh, your other option, of course, is quite simple. Basically, you can start over from scratch, which also works. Uh, this guy, it's your canvas is available right here, and basically you're dragging and dropping in. Um, the nodes that you want to work with up at the top here. So you got a number of different options available. We're only going to look at some of these options here. You also notice there's a plugin here for VSTs, which are virtual instruments that are pretty much universal to DAW. So you can bring in your existing VSTs to work with this, which we will show in just a few minutes. So we're gonna start things off very, very simply. So we want to go ahead and say um, drums. So here we've got a drum player like so, and we will connect that to the output. Not much going on there. By the way, you can control the tempo of your song, the swing of your song up here. Uh, but now we've got the drum player in here. Well, that's not going to do us a heck of a lot of good unless we drive it. So an easy way you could do it is uh, I could do a keyboard display like so, or I could drop in a MIDI keyboard, drop that into my drum player. So there you're seeing. You can play them this way, or I can go ahead, by the way, you can also get rid of things by clicking the little out arrow, and you've got op options over here. We can delete that out, and instead I'm going to do a um, drum sequencer to drop this in right there. And here you can see I can drop in, just basically chain in the note to there. So now we could go ahead and set up a sequence of drum beats. So there you see our uh, drum beat in action. We can change the speed of it right here. By the way, you can change the number of notes here. So we can go to eight note, or we go to 32, or we can go back to 16. Which by the way, I lost, you lose the notes, the extra notes that you've drawn when you do that. So I don't want to screw up my musical masterpiece. So let's get a note back into every category. All right, there we go. So there is our initial music going on. By the way, you can pause things at any time up there. So that is as simple as it is to start bringing things in. Another thing that we could have done is we could have actually gone ahead and created, um, let's go here and we will do, what do I want to do? All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take me out of the equation and we're just going to randomly create a note. So there we go. 
our random note is going to come in and we need that note to drive something. So right now we're running um, the drum player going on. I could do a sample player. So I could do drop that in right there and I could go over, just pick out any kind of a sample I want. Uh, so let's say this is just one from a humble bundle I bought in the past. Uh, let's see, what do we got? A snare. All right, so we're gonna randomly play a snare. So we just basically connect that guy in there and we pin that out to there. And now let's hear our results. So we got a random snare coming in. We can loop it to make it truly chaotic. So you can control the probability each note of that snare playing play. We can change the pitch. So, all right, we're getting somewhere. Now, also, by the way, if the sample player, you want to come in and bring in your own track, uh, you could have just as easily done that as well. So we'll go here, we'll do another sample player. Like so, we'll drop in something a little bit uh, more melodic. So let's say you'd created your own track already. Let's grab that guy and we'll pop that in there. So that will play out as I go. And let's drop that in here as well. So why are you text monthly channel audio is getting mono? Oh, so it's a mono recording. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so here you see, we'll go ahead and play that. Okay, something is excessive. Let's turn that down a little bit. Let's turn that down a bit so we we'll focus on our new. So there is our sample player in there. So we can turn our drums up. All right, so now we want to come in here and let's drop in a VST. So we could come in here and uh, here, I'll use drum sessions. This is a virtual guitar. Bring that one in there. So any of your VSTs should work. Uh, you may have to configure the directories that they're in. Uh, and that, what am I going to drive with that one? Random note or now nah, let's do a sequencer. All right, so we're going to come up here and we're going to do a note sequencer right here. And I could just basically pick a series of notes. Like so, and I will drive my VST that way. And let's just drop that in there. And we'll uh, we'll take these guys, drop their volume down so they're not interfering too much. All right, you're already down. You're down. And all right, I don't think, okay, that one's pretty much already down anyways. All right, so let's go ahead. So there's our note sequencer feeding into the VST. And at any time I can take the VST, I can open that one up like so, and then we get access to the, the VST itself. So here, let's go ahead, let's switch this out to an electric guitar, uh, warm crunch. And let's put the compressor on. By the way, you can do this in real time. So I could actually start playing. There, thing of beauty. Okay. So there we're driving with a note sequence, we're driving our VST out to create the sound. Now, one thing you've noticed so far is that I'm dropping everything into gain here. Well, gain is an audio effect, chains out, and ultimately we're, we're doing out to two different channels, the so left and the right ear via a splitter. Well, what I can actually do is multiple different effects. So for here example, I could go ahead and set up um, an equalizer. So here, and we could actually chain that through at any point in time. Here, let's chain into here. So we'll chain this guy into here, and we'll chain that guy out over here. So now we have an equalizer for controlling that. So we can go here. You really want to annoy the cats. There we go. And by the way, you can keep chaining effects until the cows come home. At the same time, you could also do that with the notes. So you'll see here, we have the notes coming out of here. So it's color coding. So you get the brown items coming out of here. Well, we could do a note effect here. So let's add some, and you can see there is a ton of options here. So let's go ahead and do some vibrato. And we'll just basically, oops. All right, let's turn those all back up. All right, and let's grab the connection port, brought it into vibrato. And then we can drag that out to our VST. And now let's play. There you go. And now let's see how our masterpiece works. We turn the volume back up on, it. not too far. Uh, you and you. 
you, I think that's everything. All right, so here is our masterpiece. Oh wait, no, you need volume. All right, there we go. So it's like something out of Doctor Who. I'm very proud of this creation, and I hope the blood isn't too bad coming out of your ears right now. Uh, you got other controls here as well. So you could actually feed things in so you could uh, pulse um, things out. So a number of things can actually be controlled by pulse. I think actually our random note generator can be controlled. Nope. What can I pulse? Hmm. Basically, you just drag and drop it in until it works to something. <laughs> And it's designed so that it's more of a, like a feedback thing. So if you'd rather pulse on demand, uh, you can actually do it as, for example, a pulse button, like so, and in. There, let me just get rid of you. Backspace. And you in. And now it only pulse, and you'll see the action when I click. And that is kind of it. Now, there is a ton more here that we're not getting into. You've got a number of, uh, you could drop comments in there, uh, do some displays, what you're working with. You can tr record out to a track. So I could feed a track uh, into here. So for example, instead of doing the left channel, I could split it, come on, into here. There we go. So now if I play it, we can record the waveform right here. So if you wanted to bring that out to another um, uh, editor or something to work with. Also, you may be wondering at this point, well, how do you get your results out? Well, that can be done using right audio. Basically, that will spit out the last 30 seconds, or sorry, 30 minutes, which is a configurable setting uh, of your results. So you go here to documents and you come down to bespoke recordings and your recording will be, I don't know if this one is the most recent or... No, that's one of my prior amazing recordings. There you go. So then you can take basically the, the bit you, that you were just jamming with and cut it down however you wish. Uh, these are ultimately just WAV files. So then you can get your output into whatever format you want. Now you are going to want to bring this into an editor and cut it down to just the size that you want. Uh, but that is how you ultimately get your results out. Basically click this and it will record out the last few seconds. So you see over here, sorry, minutes. So you see here there's a buffer size or no, not buffer size. The uh, Where did you go? Recording path is where it's saved. Record, there we go. So the record buffer length in minutes is 30. So you can set that up even higher if you want or shorter if you want. And basically it will dump out the last X minutes worth of stuff uh, out to a WAV file, which you can then cut down and use however you wish. Uh, we've also got a series of modulators here. So you see here the number of effects and so on that we've got here are, there's a ton of them here. And we're only kind of uh, playing around with probably about 2% of what is in this guy. Also, of course, you can see here, you can bring in uh, your MIDI devices uh, and sequencers and such here. Um, yeah, so that is uh, bespoke. It's definitely one of those things that you could lose an afternoon just playing around with. And it's another really kind of cool tool out there. If you're interested in checking it out, first off, uh, it is available at bespokesthinth.com. Again, it is completely free unless you want the uh, $5 lesser in your wallet version, which is $5 predictably enough, or the $15 less in your wallet version, which is 15 bucks. So bespokesthinth.com, I'll have that in the linked article down below. Also, this is an open source project. Um, so the, the 1.0 release came just eight days ago, or I think I'll publish this tomorrow, so nine days ago. You'll notice this under the GPL v3 license. Um, that means it, basically if you make changes to it, you have to make all your source code changes available available as well. Same license that Blender is released under. You can use it for commercial projects. There's no limitations that way. Um, it's a program that I don't even begin to understand most of how to use it. If you are a musician, you're going to look at a lot of these things and go, oh yeah, where I look at them and go, huh. It's kind of like, you know, a musician looking potentially at code for the first time. Well, this is kind of the thing in reverse, but this is a very interesting approach to creating music and it is actually really designed for experimentation. So if, if you wanted to um, 
uh, you know, hook up and start just jamming around. We could hook in a mini device, create your own little network of nodes to create your instruments and, and just sort of jam until you get something you like. If you like what you got, just dump out the audio in the right audio and then cut it down to the bits you like. Uh, it's a really neat tool. Uh, tons of effects built in. Uh, you've got VST support built in. It's free and it's open source. So definitely one to check out. And uh, hopefully you've got a Kleenex on hand to help wipe down that blood dripping from your ear. So what do you think of Bespoke Synth? Uh, it's kind of got its own niche. It's not really a DAW and it's not like a synth that you would plug into another DAW. It's kind of its own thing. And that thing is quite cool. So let me know what you think and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.